internal structure of turbine housings, VNT guide rings and nozzles. Can that be incorporated into a non-VNT turbocharger? Let's find out. Hi everybody, welcome back. Here's another technical video for you guys. We're going to talk a little bit about turbine housings or a little bit more about turbine housings today. Uh, as you know, we've got experience designing and manufacturing our own turbine housings. And I wanted to just share a little bit more technical info on the topic. Um, I know that this is where the internet is lacking when it comes to turbine housing technology, information about turbine housings, how to plot turbine housings, which for, for you guys, we are not doing today. We are not going into plotting turbine housings and uh, uh, um, the pressure maps and the actual maps of turbine housings. Uh, but what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the internal structures of turbine housings. The tongue, the angle of the tongue, the shape of the tongue, the distance between the inducer blades of the turbine wheel and the tongue and the effects that they have. And I will take you downstairs to go and demonstrate exactly that. So. Put your seat belts on. This is going to be a wild ride. It's going to be an exciting one. It's going to be a noisy one. And I'm sure you guys are going to love this. Right guys, so here's a couple of our turbine housings on the table along with a, a, a turbine shaft. This is a Borg Warner uh, turbine shaft which I just want to use as, um, to pick you, to, just to get the guys that aren't aware of this information up to speed. So you have an inducer and an exducer section on a turbine wheel. On the turbine, it's opposite to the compressor. The inducer, where the gas comes in, remember the gases enter into the turbine housing, go around the scroll, past the tongue, and come into contact with the inducer blades. That is the wider section, inlet. Inducer for inlet, exducer for exit, which is the smaller part. So inducer blades are the section of the, of the turbine wheel here, and the exducer is the section here. So when we talk about inducer blades, we're talking about the blades that actually sit inside of the free air gap in the turbine housing volute and obviously all of those gases that enter through the, 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 the scroll of the turbine housing will come into contact with the inducer blades which is, which is what drives the turbine. Now what we've basically done over the years is we've played a lot with the tongue position, the tongue angle, the tongue shape and the distance of the tongue to the inducer blades of the turbine and what I wanted to show you here today was the actual tongue, the difference different tongue designs we actually have. Right guys, so what I want to do is just point to the actual tongue. So the distance, or should I say the shape of a volute and the direction of, the, of the, the inlet gases will flow around the volute as it ever decreases in size. And on obviously in the internal structure, you will have something called the tongue. This is the last point um, of the actual internal structure before the gases come into contact with the inducer blades. So have a look at the shape of that tongue and have a look at the angle of the tongue in relation to the inducer blades, which obviously I can't go and put a shaft in here now because it would block the, the view of the, uh, of the tongue. Now look at this specific design, which is completely different. So you'll see that it's got a similar shape, but we've gone and put an undercut in there. We were playing around with back pressures and flow rates, and you'll actually see that this tongue is level with the uh, section over here where your inducer blades actually fit through. And um, we failed, <laughs> to be honest. So this housing is actually scrapped. We did test these, they didn't work very well. And we have another design, which you can see over here. Now, in this specific design, I don't know if the camera can see that, you can actually see that the shape of the, of the uh, tongue as well as the, or, or the, the, the path of the actual face of that tongue over there lowers. So, you know, we've, am I going to give too much detail? It's difficult to uh, keep as layman as possible without going too technical. Um, but we've basically played with lots of different design shapes, positions and distances between inducer blades and the actual tongue to try and find the best spool and back pressure characteristics for the size AR housing that we're dealing with. Right guys, that's a little bit of the intro on the actual turbine housings and some of the designs that we've got on our own tongues in, internally to our structures. What I want to do now, just to further elaborate the effects of 
different positions, distances, and angles of the driving energy is go downstairs to our test rig and demonstrate this on a rotating assembly which will show you rotational speed in RPM and you can see exactly what angle we are actually driving that rotating assembly from, the distance and obviously the height. So it will give you a much better understanding of what we're talking about here and then you will understand a little bit more about how VNT works at the same time. Let's go down to the workshop. Right guys, so we're at the, the test rig at the moment. What I want to do is show you in a few seconds the angle of the actual air nozzle that we're basically going to be driving a turbine wheel with and uh, the distance between the inducer blades. But at the same time, what we've got here is a GTX 3584 journal bearing core assembly. Um, it's one of our forged blades that uh, we offer. And I just want to show you guys the difference or the effects that an angle and distance will basically give you between the driving air and the inducer blades of the turbine. So let's come a little bit closer here and I'm going to show you uh, that angle now. Right guys, so have a look at the angle of this nozzle, okay, the angle that this is basically directing to the inducer blades. Remember these are the inducer blades over there and I'll stop a blade more or less over there so you can see the distance between the nozzle and the blade. Okay, so we're using laser, as you can see the laser over there with a little reflective pickup for the RPM. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come to the screen over here to show you the actual RPM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the, uh, the machine now. And So we had an average of around about 14,000 RPM. That's what we picked up, okay? Um, and the RPM is basically as, uh, as much as or as high as possible based on the compressor that you can hear in the background and a constant eight bar of compressed air. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually move this angle down slightly okay now as I've moved the angle down you can actually see that it's increased the gap the air gap between the inducer blade and the nozzle which I'm gonna leave there for now I'm not gonna change that all I'm gonna do now is restart the machine and I haven't changed the actual uh, uh, um, valve setting that valve is basically on a fully open position and it's locked so this cannot change all I'm gonna do is press the start button once again and I'm gonna show you the RPM here we go got an average of about 20,800 RPM and all that was was a change of angle now if we carry on moving the nozzle closer to the inducer blades and play around with the angle even more you will see an even greater effect and you'll see higher RPM than what we've just experienced now so that's pretty much what I wanted to show you guys uh, we can sit here all day and play around with angles and shapes and sizes and, and distances and you'll actually see a massive effect that it has on the rotating speed of the rotating assembly so anyway let's go back up to the training center and we'll close this video off all right guys we're back in the training center i hope you guys enjoyed that let's just recap on what i showed you the gas path at the same pressure at the same volume has got a massive 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 impact on the rotating speed and the speed at which the rotating assembly gets up to that speed so that's what we play around with when we start designing tongues and internal structures of our volutes um, in one of the other videos which I'll put a uh, link in the comment section below where we actually cut and cross-sectioned one of our turbine housings and we compared it side by side to a, a Garrett GT28 you could actually see the different shape and how those shapes actually come into the final piece of the tongue the angle and how they actually start to minimize and and uh, uh, reduce in actual size so we've played around with a lot of these things before and we've got great, great uh, results. These 
results you will find in the upcoming TZR range of Turbo Direct Turbo Chargers, which are going to be released hopefully by the end of this year. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I'd like to hear from you guys. Please comment down below, like, subscribe. Catch you guys next time.